The Robonic Stooges featured a superhero animated version of the Three Stooges. How are we gonna get that out? Use your head, dummy. Surprise! <laughs> it's Curly! Instead of the mummy, we got the dummy! It was produced by Hanna-Barbera and ran originally from 1977 to 1978 and was a segment of another show called The Skatebirds. After The Skatebirds was canceled, the Robotic Stooges were given their own time slot. And here come the Skatebirds! Knock Knock, Scooters, Sat, and Scat Cat. Then the Robotic Stooges, plus the spine-tingling, suspense-filled excitement of Mystery Island. And the doggone a staffy doings of those dog detectives, Whooper and Whimper. And believable motorcycle, Wonder Wheel. It's the Skatebird Show. Now if you watch the show, it seems like the Robotic Stooges are actually cyborgs. But the intro states that they are designed to be the world's most perfect electronic robots. Which apparently did not work out that way, obviously. I mean the part about being perfect. The Stooges live in a junkyard, and each episode would get sent on a mission by their boss, Agent OOO, which makes you think they have to be partly human, right? I mean, since they need jobs. We're not ordinary people. <laughs> We're morons. We suspect the evil Zuck Yo Yo. Hey, don't worry, boss. We'll stamp him out like this. The Stooges possessed the power to stretch their limbs and could pull out a different gizmo depending on the need at the time. Activate Curly Battering Ram! <laughs> Yahoo! Ride him, Curly! Yes. It's Sabatuji, I tell you! I'll Sabatuji you! The Stooges faced off against a different villain every episode. And each villain seemed a little more stranger than the last one. For the mummy. <laughs> <laughs> now to conquer Earth, if there is intelligent life there. We gave old Poodle Man the slip. <laughs> Take a bath, Pat. I command you. <laughs> he hates bats. Occasionally, the Stooges would exist in the past, way before anything electronic existed. Cardinal Porlu has imprisoned the Three Musketeers. Free them and save the game! Of course, that's nothing new to the Three Stooges. Oh, I remember one short they had like a radio in medieval times. What do we do? Dance, you dunce. What do we use for music? Turn on the radio. Are you kidding? This is ancient times. This is an ancient radio. Robot Stooges, away! One of the funniest episodes of the series was a parody of John Wayne meets Westworld called Pest World Ain't the Best World. Welcome to Pest World, an authentic reproduction of the Old West. We promise you an exciting vacation. <laughs> All our robot outlaws are computer controlled and absolutely harmless. The robotic stupids come to stop me, eh? Ha <laughs> ha! Now I, Yul Sinner, am robot boss of Pest World. Ha ha. Fight the automatic meringue pie thrower. The show seemed to be perfectly in line with the original Stu's shorts and spirit. Each episode was filled with energy and non-stop antics. But missing was the usual Stu's violence that moms were so worried about in the 70s. There was no slapping or head bops. Of course, even the real Stooges had eliminated eye pokes from their routine somewhere in the 60s. In this series, Mo would get beat up due to accidents caused by Curly's mistakes, and Mo would only threaten Curly and perhaps chase him around, but he would never hit him on the head in retaliation or smack him in the face. Sure, Mo. Here. <laughs> Even with the toned down violence, the show had such high levels of energy, especially for a cartoon in the 70s. It really surprises me to this day that it didn't last longer than it did. This was the second animated series to be centered around the Stooges, not counting guest appearances on Scooby-Doo or parodies in the past. The first, entitled The New Three Stooges in 1965, featured Moe, Larry, and Curly Joe, who made live appearances in between cartoons and did their own voice work. 
However, of course, by the time the Robotic Stooges aired, Larry Fine and Mo Howard had passed away. Only Joe Dorita and Joe Besser remained. Looking at the credits for Dorita, it appears he may not have been working at the time, possibly due to illness. But Joe Besser was already working for Hanna Barbera, vo- voicing characters like Babu the Genie. Hanna Barbera went with the most popular lineup of Stooges ever, of course, Mo, Larry, and Curly, but obviously had to replace them with voice actors. Why, you, I oughta. <laughs> For the voice of Mo, they got Paul Winchell, who you probably would recognize as the voice of the tiger from Winnie the Pooh. Uh, who are you? I'm Pooh. Oh, Pooh. <laughs> sure. He also voiced Gargamel on the Smurfs, Marmaduke, and he did various work on uh, a lot of 70s and 80s cartoons. Before his animated work, he was famous as a ventriloquist who worked with a dummy named Jerry Mahoney. Oh, oh, In 1960, he was featured on a Three Stooges compilation movie entitled Stop, Look, and Laugh. Mo, Larry, and Curly Shorts were bridged together with segments featuring Winchell and his dummies. The Stooges sued over the movie, claiming they weren't contacted. Columbia Pictures apologized and cut the Stooges in on some of the profits, so Winchell was no stranger to the Stooges when he took the role as Mo on the Robonic Stooges. What does it say? 264. 264. Hey, look! An oasis! Joe Baker did the voice of Larry. He later voiced Marvel's The Thing on the Fred and Barney Meet the Thing series in 1979. You may have caught a glimpse of him on movies like Dumb and Dumber in 94, or shows like Highway to Heaven. He did voice work on a few other Saturday morning shows as well. <laughs> For Curly, they got none other than Frank Welker, who is most widely known as the voice of Fred Jones and now Scooby-Doo himself, since the original voice Don Messick retired years ago. Welker has done so many cartoon voices it would be impractical to list them all in this video, but at some point I plan on doing a video just on Frank Welker. Essentially, Welker had already done the voice of Curly in the form of Jabberjaw, the futuristic cartoon about a t- talking shark who sounded just like Curly. No respect! Not even from a mouse! There's <laughs> secret thieves! <laughs> Somebody's coming! Station! Robotic Stooges! Hey! Oh, oh, oh. The Stooges' boss, Agent 000, was voiced by Ross Martin, who played Artemis Gordon on The Wild Wild West. <laughs> the only vacuum is between your ears. <laughs> Unfortunately, the robotic Stooges haven't been seen since the 70s, except for a comic book in 2021 uh, that had a few issues, and uh, then there was one issue in 2022 by American Mythology Productions. Uh, somebody needs to bring back the robotic stooges and this time maybe let them smack each other around. You know, the way stooges are meant to do. Well, other than the violence being toned down a little bit, it's, uh, it's a very enjoyable cartoon series, especially if you're a big stooges fan like me. So if you get a chance to catch it, check it out. You are watching the TV Crazy Man channel, the place for remembering classic television and movies. I also have another channel dedicated to my own personal cartoon creations called Freddy Cat Cartoons. Stooges fans might like a couple of videos I've done recently on that channel, pairing my characters and a couple of Three Stooges shorts, just for fun. I've also got a ton of stuff on this channel about the Stooges and Saturday morning cartoons. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell so you don't miss anything new. Let me know what you think about the uh, video in the comments. It helps the video and helps me know what to uh, work on next and how to make my next video better than the last. Please hit the like. Thanks and have a great day. Slightly.